Good morning. Welcome to this Perth and Kinross Council Local Review Body meeting of the 2nd of February 2021. I am Councillor Lewis Simpson, the convener of the Local Review Body, and I'm joined today by fellow councillors Ian James and Willie Wilson. Also present in the meeting is Mr David Harrison, who is the planning advisor to the LRB, is not part of the Council Planning Department and has had no previous involvement in any of the applications on the agenda today. We are also joined by Mr Colleen Elliott, the legal advisor to the LRB, and Mr Danny Williams of Committee Services. Can I ask my councillor colleagues if there are any declarations of interest by members on any item on the agenda today? I have none. No, no interest. No declaration. None from me, the convener. Right. Thank none, you. none from any of us. And we move on to item three, which is the minute of the previous meeting. Um, can we note the minute of the last meeting? Noted. Noted, Noted convener, thank you. So let's move on now to, to item four uh, and consider the first item for review, item 4.1, which is a planning application for the erection of a dwelling house on land west of 20 Struan Road, Perth. I can I ask you, Mr. Harrison, to introduce this application for review? Thank you, convener. As you say, this is a detailed planning application for the erection of a dwelling house at land west of 20 Struan Road in Perth. The site is located immediately to the west of the applicant's property at number 20. It forms the side garden area of this end terraced house and is presently contains an access, parking area and garage. The western boundary is onto a public path that links Struan Road with the housing to the rear, that's Castle View. The house and garden of number 18 lies on the opposite side of the path. The proposal involves the addition of a house to the end of the terrace in a similar form, design and materials to number 20. The proposal would be served by, an ex by the existing access and parking area. A new access would be formed off Struan Road to serve number 20. And I'll maybe just take you through the photographs now, but you might like to have page 27 onwards, which provides you with the location plan, the site plan and the proposed house. The general sequence of the photographs, as you'll see in the first one here, is the terraces and then the terrace development on the other side of the road, the site, and then the footpath link, taking you through from Struan Road to Castle View. So say in this first photograph, we see the terrace involved in numbers 20 and 18 identified in that. So you can see the, the difference in the design, as it were, of the main body, as it were, of the terrace and the uh, what has been determined as the, the bookends of the adjoining terraces, which we'll see obviously in later photographs. So that's looking as at the frontage of the terrace. And if we move slightly to the left of that photograph, in the next photograph, we go across the road, as it were, and we've got, uh, shall we say, small terraces, groups of three houses on the opposite side of the road. Uh, we move to the next photograph and slightly to the right. Uh, we're now looking, as it were, at the gap and the two bookends uh, to each of the respective terraces, which are effectively a mirror image of each other. And of course, the site is in between those two. So we then move from there onto the next photograph. And this is as, as it were, looking up the length of the, uh, the terrace. That's the terrace on the eastern side with number 20 as the, the end of it. And the red line, of course, gives you an indication of the application site and the position of the path taking you through to Castle View. And the blue line obviously shows the, the front of the uh, existing property directly in front of number 20, uh, which would then be opened up to provide a new access into that front parking area. So from there, we move to the next photograph. Uh, this gives that uh, a little more detail. You can see, as I say, starting on the left hand side of the photograph, the path going through to the pend, which takes you into Castle View, which you'll see in later photographs. And then, we, of course, we have the application site indicated in red. 
with the existing garage, which is referred to in the papers, which would be removed to provide a rear garden. And then we have, of course, the gable fronting onto Struan Road of number 20 as it stands at the moment. So from that position, moving slightly to the left in the next photograph, we pick up the, shall we see the other mirror image. The path is still indicated, but we have number 18 and its side garden. And then beyond that, we see the roofs of uh, Castle U. Swinging again to the left of that photograph, we look down the, the, to give you an indication of the rest of that terrace as it slightly steps down the hill uh, and we catch number 18 in that photograph as well. So moving on from that, uh, again slightly to the right, but trying to take in both gables as it were of the bookends, uh, this is the view of the space between the two properties uh, and you can see again the garage and then the roofs of Castle View beyond. Moving on from that photograph, uh, just to give you a little more detail, this is the side elevation and the garage of number 20 as it stands at the moment. And as you'll see, there's a window in that side elevation onto the side garden area. Uh, the proposal, just to remind you, uh, involves a, a blank gable uh, on that side elevation, which would be onto the, the, the path. And then swinging round to the left of that, uh, in that next photograph, we have the, the side elevation of number 18, which similarly has a window on that uh, that particular gable elevation. But as, as I mentioned already, the intention is to have a blank gable on the, on the new house. So moving on from there, we, as it were, in the next photograph, uh, we move into Castle View. And is it where we go over the roofs of the houses you saw in the earlier photographs? So this is in the courtyard, as it were, beyond the pend in Castle View, looking back through the pend. Uh, and you can catch number 20, or rather the roofs of number 20, uh, just in that photograph as well. So this is just to give you an impression of Castle View itself. And then to go, as it were, up the path back to Struan Road. We go in the next photograph. This is the pend. Uh, which takes us through to the path we've mentioned earlier. And then if you go through the pend, this is us now uh, in that slight dog leg there is in the path, uh, looking at the rear elevation of number 18. And then finally, in the next photograph, this is the, the path seen from the other view, as it were, looking to the houses on the opposite side of Struan Road, with, of course, we have number 20 on the left-hand side of the photograph, on the, the existing uh, rear timber wall, a timber fence at the back of the garage at the moment. And on the right hand side of the photograph, we've got the, the hedge and uh, number 18. So if we move to the next photograph, I'll just leave you with that photograph, which gives you a general impression of the site. Turning first of all in summary to the applicant's case, the applicant recognises the concerns and considerations set out in the Office of Report of Handling in arriving at the decision. However, in his view, there are innumerable development proposals within the Perth and Kinross area which have been approved that do not harmonise with the adjoining buildings and area. In addition, he states that there have been proposals that have been refused because they seek to mimic existing architecture too closely. Turning now in summary to the officer's report of handling, the existing house at number 20 is a two-storey property, as is the remainder of the terrace. It has been designed to terminate the end of the ter terrace in a contrasting form and materials. It presents a gable with timber cladding at first floor level facing onto Stewart Road and a hipped roof to that gable. The existing house design is deliberately different to provide a physical and visual termination or bookend to the terrace as a whole as part of the streetscape. It is copied in mirror image by the adjoining house number 18, which terminates the adjoining terrace. The footpath is central to this mirror image. The proposal seeks to mimic the design and form of number 20. 
the principle of residential development in a residential area is acceptable and the revised parking and access addresses earlier concerns. However, the proposal is directly at odds with the original design of this pair of terraces with their distinctive bookend architectural features that frame the space and the public footpath in between. The side gardens of numbers 20 and 18 create a sense of openness to this footpath. The extension of the terrace to accommodate a second house on the plot would upset the existing symmetry. Consequently, the subdivision of the plot for a further house is not seen as acceptable in principle. It is accepted that the proposal would affect the outlook of the immediate adjoining houses at Castle View. There would be some increased overshadowing of the garden of number 18, although there would be no loss of privacy as the proposed gable does not contain any windows. The proposal is not seen as raising significant issues of overshadowing and overlooking, and the proposed plot size is similar to other terraced houses in the locality. The proposed access and parking arrangements do not allow for vehicles to turn within the plots. However, these circumstances are also similar to many other houses in the immediate, in the immediate vicinity. Turning now in summary to representations, representations have been received from nine parties expressing concern regarding overshadowing, overlooking, inadequate parking, loss of on-street parking and the impact on the quality of the surrounding area in terms of character and amenity in a way that is contrary to local, local development plan policies. Reference has also been made in terms of comparison up to the two storey extension of a property on the opposite side of the road. These concerns are set out in full on page 41 onwards. In this instance, there is neither a request for a site visit nor a request for a hearing. Thank you, Convener. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Harrison. Uh, may I ask, are there any questions for officers on this application for review? May I ask you first, Councillor Wilson? Uh, convener, good morning, thank you. Um, and thank Mr Harrison for the, the summary presentation. I have one or two questions. Um, I'm on page 17. Uh, that's the report of handling of the papers. Um, and that picture there shows there's a bus stop um, immediately to the left of number 20 as we look at it. Now, I understand that the this revised application um, includes a, a, a joint access or parking arrangement with, with number 20 that I think Mr Harrison's just referred to about not being able to enter and leave in a forward gear. And I understand the point about there are many other properties on the street. I'm familiar, convener, with the, the, the street scene here. Um, uh, and our road service, I think, Mr Harrison, have said that's acceptable. Mm. Um, have you any further comments you want to make? It, it's still going to be fairly tight for um, access and egress, um, uh, given that there's a, a, a bus stop there. Yes, I mean, uh, my understanding is that if you turn to page 28, uh, which gives you a more detailed site plan, um, it, it actually has got the letters BS, which I assume stands for bus stop in that position um, yeah. uh, and identifies the existing access. So my, my interpretation there is that there's, there's no intended change as far as the existing access is concerned. Obviously, there's an intention to take down the wall and provide an access a new means of access to number 20 if this was to take place. Uh, and I think the, the the comment is that basically if that little bit of wall in front of the actual bus stop pole remains, then the existing situation is unchanged. Um, it's, you're absolutely right. It's a pretty tight arrangement, although the lay-by for the bus to stop at actually uh, does extend, as it were, down the slope uh, towards number 18 and, and beyond. Uh, I think we maybe caught that in an earlier photograph. So the majority of the actual stance for a bus to pull in and, and get out is slightly to, shall we say, to the left-hand side of the photograph you're looking at on page 17. Um, 
So that particular aspect doesn't uh, doesn't appear to be affected by the actual proposal, but you're you're quite right. It's it's a very tight arrangement. Thanks, convener. Could I ask one more question? On you go, Councillor Wilson. Yeah. Um, it relates to if the proposal were to go ahead, what the amenity of the the new house is, um, and also the amenity of number twenty, because it, it's quite clear from the photographs and our own observations that number twenty enjoys a degree, a deg fairly extensive degree of garden and, and garage and circulation amenity. Um, now. The report says technically, yes, a house can fit here. Technically, it can fit in. But um, have you any further comments, Mr. Harrison, about the clear diminution in the amount of amenity space for number 20 and the, the restricted amount of amenity space for the new house, given that the front gardens can be taken up with, with car parking spaces? Well, we guess to pick up your last part, First, as it were, yes, the the, gar the front area of both the properties would appear to basically become a continuous hard standing for parking. Um, the uh, as as you you observe as a terraced house, uh, it's a, and the officer is clear in that as well. The actual plot size is effectively the si similar to uh, the other terraced properties. So, on just purely on the size of the application site. Uh, he doesn't have a concern there because that's more or less commensurate. The change in amenity is uh, possibly more in relation to the street. Um, while the property itself or the new property and the existing property would, um, uh, would shall we say, have a similar level of amenity in terms of their space in comparison to the, the terrace properties, there obviously would be a change of amenity in terms of the public realm, as it were, is concerned both in general terms, as we see in the photograph here, uh, there would be a closing, as it were, of the, the space between the, the two uh, bookends, but also the, uh, the context of the path would change somewhat uh, at the moment. There's a degree of openness as you go through towards the short pen from Struan Road. Uh, that, of course, would become uh, enclosed by the, the effectively the two stories of the gable, uh, the blank gable onto the path. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Wilson. Councillor James, have you any questions for officers? None that have uh, not already been asked. Uh, thanks, convener, and quite a lot of information within the paperwork. I've, I've nothing further to ask. Thank you. Right. Well, I, I have no questions of officers. So, um, on, on that on that basis. Um, uh, we can proceed to determine the application for review on the basis of the information before us, that is the information contained within the papers and the presentation of the planning officer. Or do any of us require any further information? Councillor Wilson? I think we've got sufficient information in Mr Harrison's report and the papers, convener. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Councillor James? And likewise from me. Thanks, convener. Right. Thank you very much. I too feel that we have sufficient information, so we can now proceed to assess the case and move to debate. Uh, can I ask you, Councillor Wilson, having considered the applicant's papers, the report of handling, Perston Kinross Local Development Plan and all other relevant material planning considerations to start off? Uh, thanks, Karina. Well, as I said earlier, I'm familiar with the streetscape in Struan Road in, in Letham. Um, and um, also uh, the, the information we've had today, I think, has been quite voluminous and helpful. It, it's interesting for a, a relatively small application um, of quite a degree of representations from the public um, convener there. Many of them are, are, are similarly worded, but nonetheless, I think, are, are, are relevant and material to consideration of, of, the, of the application because they do raise a, a whole number of, of planning considerations that I think are, are germane to the, the application. I have a number of issues um, here and that reflected maybe in some of my questions. I have a concern about the, 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 the traffic and parking and the location of the bus stop here with, with this application which I think is going to, and Mr. Harrison said it, I said it, I think it was fairly tight. I think I would agree with that summation. Um, I do have a concern about the 
amenity of of the the houses in the future, both at number 18 and the new proposed house and number 20, because although the 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 garden amenity space of 20 and whatever the new house would be numbered is is equal to some of the terraced houses, it 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 I think this house would detract from the amenity of the streetscape. Um, this this area was designed deliberately to look like this and to create space, not just space for two gardens and a couple of garages. Um, and garages are highly valued in Struan Road because of the amount of, of, of cars that are parked there, but also to allow an access into, um, uh, into Castle View along the path. Um, now that access remains, it quite clearly remains, it's under no threat whatsoever, but I think its nature and character changes fairly dramatically if there's a whole house cheek to jowl with, with the path and access. And I think it, 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 I think the path is, is lit at night and quite clear, but nonetheless, it, it becomes a very narrow alley uh, rather than an op virtually open path at the moment. Um, I, the, the streetscape in Struan Road was, was designed um, and in my opinion, well designed um, when these houses were built um, uh, and they're very desirable houses and very good houses. But I think trying to squeeze another house in is going to uh, damage the symmetry of, of what's referred to in the report as the bookends. Um, and so, convener, I, I'm always reluctant um, to, to, to not be um, supporting what somebody's aspiration is, but we, we're here to make decisions on planning grounds and under the aegis of LDP2. So I go to page 15 of our papers, convener, um, and I would say that I would I would be um, supporting uh, declining approval of this this application for review and support the reasons for refusal. I I can articulate these a bit more, um, but perhaps you want to ask um, Council James for his opinion first before I go on to do that. Thank you, Councillor. We'll bring you back in once uh, Councillor James and I have made our contribution. Uh, Councillor James, have you any comment? Um, Councillor Wilson's pretty much covered everything, to be honest. Um, I, I agree wholeheartedly with, with just about everything he said. The, the, the one issue that really sticks out in my mind is the, the, the uh, lo losing off-street parking. Uh, for the one house where, where you're potentially putting two cars out onto the street and with the building of, of this other house it's another two and, and you know parking and traffic in that area is already uh, at a premium um, and for all the reasons that Councillor Wilson has said you know about the amenity and, and everything else um, I too uh, uh, am in favour of supporting the officers on this one. Thank you very much indeed Councillor James. Um, I have to say, uh, having visited the site yesterday, uh, I, I am in complete agreement with the comments both of Councillor James and Councillor Wilson. Uh, I see no reason to go against uh, the provisions of LDP2. Uh, this is an area where there is a, a lack of amenity in some areas, space is at a premium, and I can see no compelling reason to allow this subdivision of the plot. Uh, and Unusually, as Councillor Wilson pointed, there are nine representations, and, and I find that uh, on this occasion they, that I agree with most of most of what is said in them as well. So, I think on this occasion it looks as if there is unanimity with the three of us, and we are prepared to um, agree with the reasons for refusal. But perhaps Councillor Wilson, you would like to articulate any changes or alterations you might want to make uh, to the reasons on page fifteen. <laughs> Yes, in, in fairness to everyone concerned, including the applicant, I think I should articulate. I think the big issues are streetscape and maintenance of space. Um, and, and, and Councillor James has already some some that point up, so I won't I won't um, reiterate it. But I'm on page 15, convener. Um, the the um, decision letter, but also the reasons for refusal from the planning service. Um, and there are, there are two reasons for that. Um, I think it would be worthwhile um, to add some wording on to 
um, reason one, first of all, where it says um, the quality of the surrounding area in terms of character or amenity. Um, uh, and add the wording and maybe Mr Harrison and um, Mr Ellick will want to tidy this up in due course, but I'll narrate what I, I've got in my notes here. Due to the adverse effect on the existing terraces, terrace housing, sorry, and neighbouring terrace housing and loss of open space between these. Now that refers both to the, the generality of the, the streetscape, but also the particularity of the, the garden space and the, the, the path space. Mm. And if it's appropriate, considered appropriate, I would add that wording as a, as a reason to um, the reason number two for refusal that is on page 15 as well. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Wilson. Uh, can I, I ask if, Council, if um, I may nearly demoted you there, uh, Mr Harrison, um, if I ask if Mr Harrison and Mr Elliot are quite uh, happy that they can um, use um, a form of words that, that, that as articulated by Councillor Wilson to, 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 to add to the reasons for refusal. You mean our Colin Elliott here for legal advice? Yes, yes, Mr. yes. Um, the uh, grounds of refusal on page 15 as they currently stand reflect the policies and the terms of the policies, but what Councillor Wilson has done is to add the reasons as to why they're breached. And what he's done for uh, both of them, because it's the same wording, is referred to what he termed the main issues. He's, and I would stress he's not gone on to the detailed issues such as the parking, etc. But you would refer to the main issues, the kind of the, the design and the spacing, particularly in relation to the path. Um, so that would be uh, perfectly um, competent to add that wording to both grounds of refusal. Thank you very much, Mr. Elliot. So if, if uh, I take it, Mr. Harrison, you're happy? Uh, yes, I, I was just thinking of the actual wording. I think uh, the word streetscape has been mentioned quite a number of times by Councillor Wilson, uh, and maybe we could we could find a, a, add that to the, um, uh, the the wording at the same time. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Harrison. So I think that uh, that's clear, Mr. Elliot. That's a, a, a unanimous um, uh, decision there to agree with the officers' uh, reasons for refusal. Yes, Convener, if I just step in, yes. the wording could quite easily be added. It would be due to the adverse effect on the streetscape and in particular the existing terraced housing and neighbouring uh, terraced housing and loss of open space between these. So the word streetscape gets inserted quite early in that sentence. Well, I, I'm certainly content with that. Uh, Councillor Wilson, is that you agreeable with that? Yes, indeed. Thank you. Yes, and you as well, Councillor James? Just keep the yep. unanimity yep. going there. So that's, that's yep. that item completed. I, I realise if the applicants are, are watching, this is not the answer you were looking for, but I hope you would agree we have given it a, a thorough examination. So thank you. So, colleagues, if we can move on now to um, to five uh, to five one, which applications previously considered. And this is um, an application for the siting of two camping pods, formation of a vehicular access and associated works at land 40 metres northeast of Leaven View, Wester Balgedi in Kinrosshire. So uh, may I ask you, Mr Harrison, to introduce this application for review? Uh, thank you, convener. Uh, as you say, just to confirm, this is a detailed planning application for the siting of the two camping pods, formation of that vehicular access and associated works at land 40 metres northeast of Leaven View, Wester Balgedi. The site is located immediately to the north of the settlement of Wester Balgedi. The public road lies to the southeast and a stone dike lies to the northeast. A house lies adjacent to the access. The other boundaries are undefined and opened open onto the adjoining field. The timber clad pods would be modest in scale and provide a shared living bed space with ensuite bathroom. Access would be via the existing field entry. Now, maybe just take you through the photographs now, and you might like to page 
105, which provide you with location and site plans and also plans of the pods themselves. The general sequence of the photographs will be the access, which you see in the first photograph here, views of the site <laughs> and panoramic views from the site to the surrounding countryside. So I say this is us looking in a northerly direction on the public road, approaching the application site, and they say the access is identified there, and the the, the house which is immediately abutting the application site, that's Leaven View, uh, is just caught in this photograph as well. But what you'll notice here is that the public road, as it were, swings round as we slightly climb up the hill, uh, and it's uh, set at a lower level than the application site. There's a slight embankment between the public road and the application site. So if we move on from that photograph, uh, we see in more detail the access itself. And so we have this high boundary wall of Leaven View on the left hand side of the photograph here, the existing access going in and you can see that the land rises fairly significantly as you go into the application site proper as it were. Uh, and then, of course, we have the, the tree on the opposite side of the access. And so if we move on to the next photograph, this is us, as it were, standing in that entry now, looking back to where we were in the first photograph from that, uh, that position, as it were, if you were sitting in a car leaving the application site. And of course, we're just catching the high wall of Leaven View on the right hand side of that photograph. And then if we move from there to the next photograph, we're as it were looking in the opposite direction, up the public road, more into the countryside, away from the settlement. Uh, and as you can see, it's quite uh, well wooded and the ground is, of course, rising in that direction as well. So from there, if we move to the next photograph, we, as it were, step into the main part of the application site. As you'll be aware, we have the access coming in and then the application site opens out. Uh, so this is us looking in that westerly direction down towards Loch Leven uh, in that photograph. But we're still catching, as it were, the rear wall of Leven View, which we'll see in later photographs. But as you can see from that position, the ground falls away down towards Loch Leven and the adjoining open field. So from there, if we swing slightly to the right of that photograph, and there will be a sequence of photographs swinging to the right. This is from a similar position looking across in that more northerly direction towards the Ojo Hills uh, in that photograph. And as you can see, the, the foreground is relatively uncultivated, and then we get into the main cultivated part of the field beyond the application site. Swinging round to the right of that photograph, uh, we now look, as it were, up the application site, more in an easterly direction, uh, and we're just catching the trees uh, next to the road uh, which we saw in the earlier photographs on the right hand side of the, the photograph we have here. And we're effectively looking up to the position of where the, the pods would be in the more elevated part of the application site. And again, you might just begin to pick up the stone wall, which was referred to earlier, uh, beyond the slight rise of vegetation uh, and the, 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 the light area there, just as it goes off towards the left hand side of the photograph. But I say we'll see that in, in more detail later. So if we move from that position, uh, that takes us up to the wall I've just been mentioning, the, the, the dike on that boundary of the application site. And as it were, we look over into the next field and beyond that up towards the Lomond Hills themselves. And the bank of trees that you see on the right hand side of the photograph um, are basically following the line of the public road. So from there, in the next photograph, we swing right towards the right of that. We look down that boundary with the, with the stone dike, and we're just picking up Leaven View or the gable of Leaven View, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on the right hand side of the photograph. And you see the main body of the application site. And you see where, that, where you see that gable is where the access comes in from the public road. So this is us looking across the part of the application site which will contain the two pods. So from that position again swinging around to the right, in the next photograph we see Leaven View more clearly and where the access comes in. You can see quite distinctly where there's a separation between the, the cultivated part of the field 
and the part which is left largely uncultivated and just used for general storage purposes. So if we swing round to the right of that photograph again, this gives us a view down the main body of the field in the foreground towards Loch Leven itself. And you can see the extent to which the site is elevated above Loch Leven. Swinging round again to the right of that photograph, uh, we get the wider panorama uh, towards the, the hills. And again, moving to the right of that photograph, we look in the northerly direction uh, across the fields that are beyond. So this is from the sort of position uh, from where the, the pods would be, be sighted. Moving on from that photograph, uh, we now are standing in the application site in the position of pod number two, approximately, um, and uh, looking across the application site, the field beyond. So this is this is more more a similar position to where uh, somebody in the pod would be looking out. So if we move from that photograph uh, to the next one, we step down into the, the ground slightly below the application site and behind Leaven View looking up to the general position of the two pods uh, from that, it says looking in a northeasterly direction. <clears throat> and I'll just leave you with that photograph. Turning now in summary to the applicant's case, the applicant considers that there has been a lack of consistency in the assessment of his proposal when compared with recent approvals for similar tourist developments nearby. These applications did not need to be the subject of a business plan. They were also subject to the same citing criteria D and E of Local Development Plan Policy 2, number 8 and Policy 9C, which have remained relatively unchanged from LDP 1. The officer accepts the landscape impact and citing context and the lack of any justification in relation to demand in those areas. The applicant considers that his proposal shares similar views over Loch Leven, but enjoys a greater degree of enclosure within the landscape due to a background of mature trees, is more accessible and lies adjacent to a settlement. It is seen as integrating well within the special landscape area with the use of appropriate materials at treated timber and curved PVC roof membranes. Regarding local development plan to policy eight, that's rural business and diversification, it's noted that the previous local development plan did not require a business plan to be submitted. His application was only lodged some 12 days after the new plan being adopted, and it is thought that there should have been a period of grace in such circumstances. The proposal is seen as a perfect example of a small scale diversification of an existing agricultural business to meet the criteria of this policy. Regarding local development plan to policy 9C, that's chalets, timeshare and fractional ownership, the site's, and I quote, unique selling point is its views over Loch Leven and proximity to the National Cycle Route 1 and the Hart 200 driving route. As such, it is seen as meeting this policy. Regarding local development plan to policy 46, that's the Loch Leven catchment area, the applicant has the information ready to demonstrate that the phosphorus mitigation measures can meet the 125% requirement, even if this has not been assessed by SEPA at, the, at this stage. There, of course, has been further information submitted on that. Yeah. It is seen that this could be addressed through a condition and the planning of a planning consent or by the appeal being continued to enable the information to be submitted. In addition, the high boundary wall of the neighbouring house, that's Leaven View, would ensure that there would be no concerns regarding overlooking or overshadowing. In relation to the equivalent former local de development plan policies ED3 and ED4C, the proposal would utilise a corner of a field which is difficult to access with modern farm machinery. It would provide low cost accommodation 
serving walking, cycling and other tourist related activities in the area. Turning now to the officer's report of handling in summary, LDP2 policy 8, rural business and diversification, favours the expansion of existing businesses, preferably within or adjacent to settlements. Out with settlements, proposals may be acceptable where they diversify an existing business or have specific resources or opportunities. That's site specific resources and opportunities. This is provided that permanent employment, additional tourism or recreational facilities are created. The applicant statement envisages that the low cost holiday accommodation would diversify his farm business. The site adjoins but lies out with Western Balgedi. Proposals under policy 8 are required to meet a number of criteria. The proposal is assessed as meeting the criteria with the exception of number D and number E. Part D this refers to the site is in an elevated and exposed position and has limited containment or boundary definition to the northwest and southwest. It has not been adequately demonstrated that the, that the prominent location within the Loch Leven and Loch and Lomond Hill Special Landscape Area is the most appropriate location to facilitate the development. Regarding criteria E, Although the site forms part of the applicant's farming business, the location and extent of the applicant's farm has not been identified. The site is not considered to meet a specific need by virtue of its quality. It forms the corner of an agricultural field with no specific qualities which would set the site apart from others. The supporting statement refers to the local area being frequented by tourists due to its picturesque location, various attractions and numerous outdoor activities available, such as the National Cycling Route and the Hart 200 driving route close to the site. However, no evidence has been submitted to support the applicant's view that there is an opportunity for this type of low-cost holiday accommodation to meet a specific need in relation to his business or as a tourist facility. In that sense, the site is not seen as unique in what it can offer, and therefore it is not considered to meet the criterion. As the proposal is assessed as failing to meet criteria D and E, it does not comply with policy 8 of LDP2, and as a consequence, it does not comply with policy 9C, chalets, timeshare and fractional ownership criteria C. Additionally, the application also did not include a business plan, albeit that that has been replaced now, and that was a requirement of policy eight. A business plan was not requested as the proposal was not considered acceptable for other reasons. The site is seen as being remote from the applicant's home and no information has been su submitted as to how the facility would be managed or supervised. Turning to policy LDP2, uh, policy 46, Loch Leven catchment area, and the associated supplementary guidance, this requires information to be submitted in in, with a full planning application for new developments to provide details of proposed 125% phosphorus mitigation. This, of course, has been addressed to some degree by further information being sitting, submitted as by way of a consultation from SEPA. There are no concerns regarding access or design considerations. Turning to representations, there are four representations which mainly concern noise and light pollution, detrimental impact on residential amenity, proposal being contrary to local development plan policy, the site being out with the settlement boundary, the loss of agricultural land and the access being unsafe. Port Moak uh, Community Council refer to the need for noise to be controlled and draw attention to the possible impact of proposals on the foot on a footpath link between Balge Western Balgedi and Glen Lomond. 
As I mentioned earlier, there has been further information submitted. At its October meeting, the LRB can course continued the application to invite the applicant to submit information regarding his business plan and to secure a consultation reply from SEPA regarding phosphorus mitigation. The applicant's review of market conditions and his aspirations for the development, including projecting costs and cash flow, are contained in pages 214 to 218. The response from SEPA is on page 221. And this refers to mitigation at Lathrow Farmhouse as the mitigating property. In this case, there is a request for a site visit, but there is no request for a hearing. Thank you, convener. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Harrison, for that comprehensive introduction. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, are there any questions for officers on this application for review? Can I, can I ask you first, Councillor James? Um, convener, no, uh, from Mr. Harrison's um, presentation just then uh, and the the wealth of paperwork we've got with us. Uh, uh, perhaps the, the only thing, in fact, I think um, Mr. Harrison did just uh, touch on it, then just for clarity, SEPA are now um, happy with the um, Phosphorus mitigation um, paperwork that's uh, been provided. Uh, yes, I think this is on, on page 221 if you're wanting to refer to the actual wording they used, um, but maybe just to read it to you, that'd be the easiest thing maybe. Um, the two glamping pods and the mitigating property, which it refers to in, in brackets, Lathrow Farmhouse, will each need a car simple license to authorise the private uh, sewage discharge from the new treatment systems and the applicant should contact the local regulatory service team to discuss this. So there, there, there's still some uh, some details to be discussed, but they would appear to be broadly consent subject to uh, the, the mitigation taking place at that property. What I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know is what the applicant's relationship with that property is, whether he owns the property or he has some other contractual arrangement to undertake the, the works. But that aside, he'd have to get that, that permission before he could do anything anyway. Yeah. Yes, yeah, they make quite specific reference to the need for a car license. Yeah. OK, thank you very much, Mr. Harrison. Thank you. Uh, that's if, if, that's all your, if that's all your questions, Councillor James, I will turn to you, Councillor Wilson. Have you any questions for officers on this application? Thanks, Karina. Um Yes. And my first one's been asked by Councillor James, so that's been covered as, as far as phosphates, because at least we've got that cleared um, quite quite uh, unequivocally. Um, <clears throat> road access, um, there was a useful photograph, um, and you don't need to flick back to it, Mr. Addison, but it was showing us the curve and the access and the slope. The road service are, are content with that, um, I read the report. I think that was my reading of it. Um, is that correct? Yes, the, the, there is no objection from from Rhodes, and that's noted in the officer office report. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the the distance you've been on site, Mr. Harrison, and the picture before us today, the photographs useful. How how many meters is from the leaving, leaving mouth house, right? Leaving view, sorry, leaving view house, and to the this pod. How, approximately, how many meters might that be? Uh, if you just give me a moment, I'll measure that for you. Uh, as near as makes any difference, thirty meters. OK, 3-0, OK? Yes, 3-0. Yeah, and the applicant's house, um, it, because this is, this is this site is in the ownership of the applicant, obviously, and it's part of a field because there's vegetables growing in the in, in, in the field in the photographs, um, and it, it looks as if it's a corner that's used for storing materials, as you said, but the applicant's home or office or base is not here, obviously. Um, it's elsewhere. Uh, could you tell us where that is, Mr. Harrison? Um, well, I think you 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 may have picked up that the officer has indicated that the extent of the applicant's farm and 
presumably accommodating his farmhouse uh, is not not defined in any of the paperwork you have. My yeah. my understanding, and I stress it's an understanding, is the applicant lives in a, a relatively recently completed property. Um, just looking at the photograph here, uh, beyond a, a couple of fields, at least beyond the the trees you see in the photograph here, moving towards the Lomond Hills. Um, so it probably would be in the order of um, about maybe about a quarter of a mile away. Okay, but but it, it, it isn't the the cottage next door to leave in view in in Mr. Bulgeri. No, my understanding that's that's not the, the situation. No. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I think given the very comprehensive nature of the report. Um, convener, that's all my questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Councillor Wilson. Uh, I just have a couple of questions, Mr. Harrison, for me with regard in the access. I have to say I was quite surprised to read the road services view uh, when I was there yesterday, albeit it was a little bit snowy. It's a very narrow road, uh, the public road, with fairly high. Uh, I can see from your photograph the grassy banks. There were snowy banks yesterday. Um, with not much room for, for manoeuvre, uh, for extra traffic. May I ask as regards the, the access, is there any other access to the field for the agricultural part of the field, or would they use the same access to, and come in past the pods? Um, I don't know for sure. All I would maybe say by way of comment is that there happen to be people working in the lower level of the field uh, when I when I was there. Uh, I got the impression that they may have access at that lower level as well as this access. Um, uh, also, having spoken to the neighbour, um, and you probably picked this up from the photographs, that the, the access seems to have been, uh, shall we say, enlarged slightly. Uh, there, there was an access there, there's no question about that, but it's been enlarged slightly relatively recently. You might have noticed that the uh, uh, looking up the hill towards the, 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 the cutting, as it were, the embankments that you just talked about, uh, Councillor Simpson, that the, the ground was actually exposed there mm -hmm. rather than vegetated. Yeah. And the roots were exposed as well. So uh, I get the impression that this has not been the, the main access into the field. It has been an access, as you can see in some of the photographs, for maybe some things to be come in and, and, and deposited from time to time. But certainly the um, the, the ground conditions wouldn't suggest it's the principal access to the field. Right, thank you, Mr. Harrison. And then another one I, it would be for, for you or for Mr. Elliott, but with regarding the supervision and management of the site, um, is there anything within the legislation which covers that? Is there, a, is there, a, is there a, a ruling whereby there needs to be a certain distance away that the supervision and management takes place? Because it is, it is interesting that they, it, it would appear that the owner lives far enough away, perhaps not to be disturbed if there was any, any disturbing noises and possibly not to be aware of any problems. But is there anything within the legislation covering the, the supervision and uh, management of a site such as this? Um, in, in short, from a planning point of view, uh, there's, there's, not a, a, there's not a requirement to have, uh, shall we say, on-site supervision. It's, it's pretty commonplace, uh, obviously, to have on-site supervision of some shape or form, if only for checking people in and, and generally supervising the running of things. And so that, uh, you know, if people have questions, you, you know, I think people can be responded to. Uh, and obviously many farm diversifications for things like glamping pods are usually you know around the back of the, the farm or the, the barn or whatever it is so there, there is a degree of presence on site but there's not there's not a uh, shall we say a requirement in the sense that if you have uh, a site you must have on-site supervision that would largely be seen as a matter of uh, for the for the management of the, the person involved Although it 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 can it can happen that if uh, if if a develop, tourist development takes place, you can of course find that uh, there there are later applications for some provision for on-site supervision. Uh, thank you, Mr. Harrison. That, that's all, all my questions. Have you anything to add to that, Mr. Elliot? Nothing, Nothing to add to that, Mr. Elliot. No, 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 Mr. Harrison articulated it well. 
Right. Thank, thank you very much indeed. So we can now um, proceed to make a preliminary decision. So um, members, can we proceed to determine the application for review on the basis of the information before us? That is the information contained within the papers and the presentation by the planning advisor or do we require more information? Uh, Councillor James. I'm more than satisfied we have um, everything we need now. Thank you, convener. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Wilson. Hey, thanks, convener. I, I think we have sufficient information in the addition of the, the information um, on the business plan has been helpful. Thank you. Right. Well, and I too, colleagues, are, are happy to proceed and to assess this case. So we will move to debate. Uh, can I ask you, Councillor James, having considered the applicant's papers, the report of handling, the Perth and Kinross Local Development Plan and all other relevant material planning considerations to start us off? Thank you very much, convener. Uh, I mean, uh, this is this particular application has been back to us a couple of times now uh, and, and it's been sent away for further information and, and the applicants he, he's fulfilled those obligations uh, and I think initially the the, the very big concern for us w was the the uh, phosphorus mitigation uh, I'm quite satisfied now that, that you know with with the um, Mr Harrison's explanation the the um, the report on page 221 um, fulfills the the reason for refute number three reason for refusal uh, on the um, uh, on his initial application. So I'm quite satisfied with the phosphorus mitigation and, and the license and what have you, which leaves the other two reasons for refusal from the officers. Um, it, <laughs> putting something like that, it, it's very subjective. I believe, uh, and 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 the, the reasons for refusal could be read a, a couple of ways. I, I personally uh, think that the applicant has has thought about this. While there's not uh, um, his property on site, I think looking at uh, Google Maps, which is our friend at the moment, um, I think he's close enough to to be able to to um, manage that site. Uh, effectively, I think uh, it's in a good. I can see his reason for putting the pods where he has because the view across Loch Leven is spectacular, and it also serves a purpose. As somebody who who actually was going to build a property uh, next to a, um, a national cycleway um, for this very reason, I, I can see why he wants to put pods. Um, next to a, a cycleway and of course the Hart 200. So I'm minded to actually allow um, this application um, as, as I feel he's fulfilled um, all of the reasons for refusal. I think he, he's actually um, applied himself. So I, I'm for it. Thank you, convener. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor James. Can I now turn to you, Councillor Wilson? Thank you, and I, I agree with Councillor James. We've given this a a, a thorough um, examination over over a period of months. Um, I've still some, although I think Councillor James is right, and the phosphorus mitigation issue has been resolved um, to the satisfaction of SIPA, and therefore we, we we're satisfied if that's the case. I still have a number of concerns about it. Um, I have concern about the road access that you 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 deliberated on, um, convener. I'm I'm surprised the roads folk just ticked the box on that one because our, our road service in the council, because I I think there's issues about entrance and it's one thing for an agricultural vehicle to go in once a day into a field, which is generally what they do, and then come out again. But if there are people using this, although we like to think there might be cyclists, there will inevitably be motorists if it was given approval. There will be a variety of traffic on that, that corner. And the folk who are coming, and this is no disrespect to anybody's driving skills. Uh, um, as you know, gentlemen, I'm, I'm not a driver, but, but um, 
it, people are, are strangers to the, the countryside of the roads and sometimes the width of the roads and the topography and therefore it, it, it introducing traffic, kind of urban traffic on this corner, I don't think is, is, is safe, to be quite blunt. Um, however, it's difficult to argue with the, the, the road service because a professional officer says they consider it's acceptable. Um, but I, I think there's a road safety issue here. Um, the other issue I've got is this is a kind of a bit in a corner of a field that doesn't really relate to much else. Um, it, it relates to the view. Councillor James is absolutely correct about that. The view is stunning. Um, however, there's lots of bits of Kinrosshire that have got a stunning view mm -hmm. and that we wouldn't necessarily want development in them. And I think because it, it's at the edge of the settlement and doesn't relate in any way to any facilities within the settlement or 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 um, and there are not a lot of commercial facilities in Western Bulgaria and that, that's not a criticism that's just a, a piece of fact right um but um it's not within the the, the body of the kirk in, in terms of the the streetscape in the village etc uh, or even the landscape of the village um but and I think it's it's part beside a house that has no link or relationship whatsoever with the proposed use. And I think that's fine if we get people who are very quiet and come in their way a couple of bikes. But what if it's booked out for somebody and there's a noise issue? You raised this, Councillor Simpson. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, it, I think the answer was it's difficult to frame conditions that would be um, easily, easily implemented. And there's no point in us thinking about conditions that are not that are not capable of enforcement. Um, and I'm I, I've got some empathy with the, the application, uh, but I, because of the 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 remoteness of the site in relation to both the, the applicant's house, and I take the point it's only a quarter of a mile away, but um, and and also the proximity of the existing house. Um, leaving view that we see before us and the road access. I'm I'm I think minded to not uphold the, the review. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Um this is one of these occasions where I may regret not having gone earlier because having having listened carefully to you both, I, I am in agreement with many of the points. However, I, I am concerned a little bit about the that possibly if I describe the harking back to LDP one, which is 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 beyond our beyond our control. We have to consider um, all applications using using uh, LDP uh, uh, two. Um, I, I share Councillor um, Wilson's concern about the about the access and the supervision uh, and the narrow roads roundabout, and also the the expansion of the of the the hamlet um, em, envelope of the of the hamlet of Wester Balgedi. Um, I would agree, however, with Councillor James. It's a marvellous place to have a pod, and there's lovely views. But as Councillor Wilson pointed out, that's not unique to this particular corner of the field. And there are lovely views all, all over the, the Loban Hills and up that road. So, it, all these decisions that we are called upon to make are, are a balance. And I think uh, on balance, and it's a very close decision on my part, but I'm afraid I agree with Councillor Wilson and uh, we'd uphold the um, the reasons for refusal uh, as articulated on page 111. So if I can just um, check with you, um, Mr Elliot and um, Mr Harrison, that you're content that you have that. Uh, Convener uh, Colin Elliot here, if I come in. Um, yes, if I take you by majority decision, um, it is to refuse the application. The minority decision would have been to grant in the sense that it accords with the development plan. That's what Councillor James was saying. But if I could take you to page 111 and the two grounds of refusal. Now, it doesn't have the detail in which both of you, uh, Councillor Kinnear and Councillor Wilson, articulated. It doesn't directly refer to roads. Um, but uh, my question for both of you is whether you want to uh, um, change or supplement those grounds of, ref of refusal. It's a matter for you. They are saying that basically policy 8 and policy 8C specifically and about well, especially in terms of the specific need has not been established. Mm -hmm. And that can encompass a lot of different reasons within that. 
So um, it's a matter for you whether you want to supplement those grounds or leave them more or less as they are. Thank you, Mr. I think I think for my own part, I, I would simply tidy up both one and two by removing the words adopted before the Perth and Adosh Development Plan. And I think to be really picky, I think we should have um, we, we should we should have um, 2019 in, 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 in not in inverted commas, but we should have that um, shown shown as separate. Yes, you know, the generally accepted reference to the LDP would simply be the Perth and Cross Local Development Plan 2 and then in brackets 2019. Right. Yes, I think if we have that, I think with regards to the roads, I think Councillor Wilson can 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 articulate this himself. But I, I'm not inclined to to add anything extra. And, and to, if the road service are happy, then um, I think I think we just leave that. I'm perfectly content to go with the two reasons for refusal on page 111. But I don't know if you have anything to add, Councillor Wilson. I agree with your summary. I do feel personally quite strongly about the roads, but it's very difficult to put a reason into into a, 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 a refusal of a, a of a review if if we have information from an officer that says they consider, in their professional opinion, that it's satisfactory. We, you and I may disagree with that opinion, but um, we still need to, I think, respect it. Right. Th thank you, Councillor Wilson. So, if I can just uh, finally check with Mr. Elliott and Mr. Harris, they have nothing further to add. Mm. Uh, no, thank you, Convener. Uh, right. Nothing else. It's quite clear that the uh, by majority decision to refuse. Well, thank you. Well, the, the, again, if 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 there's the applicant or or the people are watching, um, although this will will not be the the answer you were looking for, I, I think you will agree this has been given a, a very thorough examination over a number of meetings. Um, and our decision was, was has been it's been decided by by a majority that we refuse this application. So that's all the business for this meeting for today. If I can thank you all for your attendance, and we'll see you all next time. Goodbye.